Okay, here we're going to have a presentation on Stampy, and uh, I'd like to introduce Martin Hobetic from Syncom Small Talk Development Team. And uh, this is a 45 minute talk, so we'll be going till uh, noon on this. And what do you say? Half hour, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 30 minute talk, 30 minute talk. Okay, good. So, and we're 15 minutes behind, yeah. So we'll go 30 minutes, thanks. Oh, okay. All right. Hello. Um, I've been uh, in her here earlier this week talking about extremes, and I found out that I uh, went through the whole talk with my sunglasses on, um, and which earned me a nickname now, Cool J. Martin, I think, something. <laughs> so I want to explain that it's uh, not that I really want to look cool, but I left my regular uh, prescription glasses at home, so this is what I'm stuck with. Um, but anyway, I, should, I guess I should continue the theme. Um, so Stampy is something that uh, I'm not sure is that interesting to that many people. It's a mail client in Smalltalk. It, uh, however, builds on a long tradition in the visual works uh, uh, field area, or I don't know. There was uh, this thing called Stamp, which many of you probably heard about over the years. It was a uh, it actually goes a long way back. The earliest trace of it that I found was ObjectWorks 4.1. There's a directory called stamp and a file in, in there called tools-mailreader, I think, .st. So that would put it back into the 1992, but I spoke to Georg earlier and he says it's way, er, way, way older than that. So I think if I piggyback onto this uh, a predecessor, then uh, this is one of the oldest small talk projects, probably. So I tried to resuscitate that very old guy uh, uh, in, I think this was in uh, Visual Works 7, so this is how it looks when I managed to open it up in Visual Works 7. Um, later on, in 5i2, it was shipping still as a goodie. It looked slightly differently, so this is how would you how you would see different messages on, uh, in, in, uh, and that dates about uh, year 2000. When you open the message, you would get something that looked like this, and the editor would look something like this. Um, so uh, it was, I think, used primarily internally. I'm not aware of any external users. Uh, uh, I know Alan. Uh, was complaining several times that Elliot lost his mail archives a couple times to <laughs> this tool, and that's why he wasn't able to get any response from him. But um, it's been uh, there was a lot of interest, primarily internally, to have something written in uh, in Visual Works. I guess the reason to have something like that was less as and less relevant as the time went on, and the various mail clients got much better than back in 1992. But uh, still interesting to have something. So in the uh, early 2000, there was a big push to f in VisualWorks to build various uh, net client libraries and Stamp got eventually ported to that new library and was called Stamp version 2. We did it support for IMAP and various other things. But uh, it was used even less than the previous one. So eventually we dropped Stamp in last year actually from the goodie collection, partly because Stampy started as a sort of an effort effort to come up with something a little bit more modern and looking something more like this. Um, I guess people wonder why we would why would we really spend time writing a mail client in small talk? I think I agree with that sentiment, but it just sort of happened. Uh, you know, as we were writing the net client libraries, the uh, 
we would get uh, various questions from the few stamp users why this doesn't work in bug reports so you sort of get involved whether you want it or not and eventually you accumulate it enough that you know you just had a mail client and it was working and so two years ago it was basically good enough that I decided well why not just use it and I switched from Thunderbird to to Stampy and I'm still using it today um, uh, the, the switch was actually pretty easy. I closed the Thunderbird and opened Stampy on the same directories because Thunderbird fortunately uses the same Unix mbox format for its folder files and it's just a directory structure. So, And plus, I also wanted to be able to, if the experiment doesn't work out, I really need to be able to switch back on, on the spot. So uh, uh, that was the intended route to take anyway. But I haven't had to so far, so we'll see how long it lasts. So um, what does it take to, uh, to write a mail client in VisualWorks? Well, with the net client libraries, you get a bunch of stuff. For one, you get the basic core MIME framework, and uh, which gives you the ability to parse arbitrary MIME entities, arbitrary complex MIME entities. Uh, you don't really get that many variations in the wild, but I mean, uh, the MIME specification allows all kinds of interesting entities to be created, which probably not much software would be able to handle. Nevertheless, it's all largely covered in the framework, so you can parse them, you can generate them, you can write them, and all that. Then there's a mail package, which um, extends that a little bit further, because uh, the main uh, extensions there are that the MIME framework is sort of geared towards reading the MIME entities off of a socket, so from some sort of a transient source. So it generally copies whatever's coming from that source into memory or into an external file or something like that. But for, for a mail client, you really have the messages sitting in your file system and they are not going anywhere, or at least that's not the intent. And uh, so... Uh, uh, you don't want it to copy the content anywhere. You just want to be able to get it from there whenever you need to actually look at it. So the mail package sort of extends the MIME frameworks to allow that sort of use. So if you if you parse a mail, mail message using the mail capabilities, it's not going to copy anything from anywhere. It's going to sort of point back into the original source of the message. So that's the main, uh, and you have the stream segment uh, abstraction there, which allows you to treat uh, the file stream as a, as a, as a sequence of substreams in a sense. And very few other things, but um, not enough to actually have a mail client ready out of the box. There's also the various protocol implementations, POP3 and IMAP, and their SSL wrapped variants and SMTP and its secure variant. However, uh, there is the currently these days generally the preferred way to run a secure SMTP server is to run it over the same port as the non secure version of the protocol. And there's this sort of extension to the SMTP protocol called start TLS which allows to switch the connection from secure mode to non-secure and back. And so that part is still not implemented in the core framework. But you can do secure SMTP through dedicated ports, which was used earlier, where you would have one port for secure connections and a different port for, for non-secure connections. And there is a standard uh, POP3S port as well, but it's just not available in many with many ISP providers, and and that's so we'll we'll have to catch up there with the Start TLS extension. So that's what you get with the NetFlame framework. What you don't get is some sort of general notion of a, of a mail folder. I mean, the 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 mail message is supposed to come somewhere from some sort of a file, but there is nothing uh, allowing you to figure out where exactly in that file that message sits. That's something you have to figure out uh, on your own. So there is no support for mbox or whatever other mail folder uh, formats uh, there might be out there. Uh, there is also 
there is a uh, sort of a mailbox uh, class in the mail package which tries to implement the functionality of pulling some sort of account, pulling the messages down and have a queue of outgoing messages and sending them out. But that client, uh, I'm not sure actually where it came from, uh, that class, but uh, it's sort of geared towards, again, having the messages in memory, which I didn't quite like. So uh, in Stampy, I don't use that class at all. Uh, there's a different solution that I call inbox, which sort of combines the folder notion with the capability of associating that folder with a particular mail account. Um, there's also uh, issues with uh, if you have a large mail, a reasonably large mail archive, the mail package doesn't really provide options out of the box to not parse the entire message completely, it, uh, which is not going to scale. If you start up your mail client and start starts to scan the folders, you don't want to parse the entire messages. You basically, you don't want to parse the body of the message ever unless you actually are looking at the content. So these sorts of things are things that I needed to extend the basic visual work stuff with. Um, Another scalability limitation that I ran into was that even the POP3 and IMAP clients, the API is sort of geared towards uh, first reading the entire message in memory and then doing something with it, which sort of makes sense for general framework, but in the context of a mail client, that's really not what I want to do. I want the message to go from the circuit straight into the file. I don't want to try to do anything with it because when you try to do things, things go wrong and you lose messages. So the very first thing I that I want to happen is just put those bytes into the file, leave them alone, and I'll try to do something with them later once they are safely on the disk and I'm not going to lose anything. So I had to actually, or had to, I extended the client API to, to make it, uh, gear it towards that sort of use rather than the, uh, the the more generic one. So um, what I had to add was this notion of a mail archive with directories and folder files and the inbox that I briefly talked about. I had to add a notion of an account, which is like an, uh, an account with an ISP, which generally provides some sort of POP3 or IMAP access and SMTP access to send messages out. Um, given that there are, so I also extended the host spec class in there to allow different kinds of uh, mail client, uh, di different kinds of clients, not just POP3, but on Unix, if you run on Linux or something, uh, or that sort of a system, you uh, also have the standard Unix mail stuff through which you can get things like uh, notification from the OS when the cron daemon runs or you know whatever you run some cron jobs you want to see how they went and that's that information is usually delivered over the local mail unix facilities so i added uh, the mail spool client which behaves like the pop3 client but instead of talking to some server server somewhere it goes into the local spool mail spool files and pulls the messages from there um, any decent client also needs to be able to sort mail, sort through the incoming mail, you know, put the junk somewhere else or throw it away and that sort of stuff. So I needed some sort of rules and rule sets to, to be able to manage the sort of automated part. And finally, uh, I also uh, needed to package this all up into some uh, reasonable way, so I created a Stampy system. Systems uh, uh, or subsystems in visual works are uh, this sort of neat facility which allow you to synchronize your application with image startup and shutdown, and so it made perfect sense to, to tie this infrastructure into that, that when I launch a Stampy image, it knows, uh, it knows that it can start scanning the folders and get ready and start pulling the, the mail accounts and all that. And similarly, when I shut down the image, I want to be able to close everything down, close the folders, do whatever 
uh, cleanup is necessary before I actually exit the image. Um, there's a bunch of stuff I didn't do in Stampy that might be useful. Uh, I don't have any any delivery queue, so I don't have facility to write an email and uh, queue it up for s for you for sending so that it somehow automatically gets delivered when I finally get connected. At this point, the way I deal with it, I just save the message into a folder and send it later. Uh, but that's probably something people would want from their mail client. Uh, I'm not running any automatic cleanup, uh, well, uh, cleanup in a sense that normally the way most mail clients presumably work is when you delete a message, it doesn't go and rewrite the entire folder file because they get quite big. Generally, they just, they just mark the messages deleted and once in a while there's process or something that goes through the entire folder and throws out all the, all the deleted messages. Uh, in Stampy, I call that compacting the folder, which you can do manually, but I don't have that plugged into any sort of background process. Not because it's difficult, it's actually very easy, but I'm sort of queasy about, uh, you know, sometimes I delete something and I'm glad that I didn't compact yet. Uh, so I'm not sure I really w didn't figure out some sort of scheme where which I would find acceptable in terms of, you know, I prefer, the d I have different facilities there. I can see when the folder is uh, largely junk, you know, when I see that there's 80% of deleted messages in it, which waste, you know, 20 megabytes of space, then I decide, okay, I'm gonna compact this now. But I mean, adding, making this more automated, writing a rule that checks this for you automatically and at four o'clock just dumps all the garbage would be pretty, pretty simple. Another issue in Stampy is that, um, I don't, I have very simple search facilities when you need to search something with a, a word or something in a subject or from field or from and to fields, but uh, because I'm dumping the messages into the folder files in the exact same form as they come over the socket, often the, the content is, is encoded for transfer, so you may have a text message, but if it's base64 encoded because it's using some sort of uh, uh, encoding that's not ASCII, then it's difficult to search in that sort of content. There are various ways to deal with that and could be improved, but uh, that's not, some not something you would find in Stampy today and probably not anytime soon. Uh, I don't do IMAP as well at this point, Exactly, because as I said, I had to extend the pop client to do it the way I want it to do instead of what's provided by the client by default. So the same sort of small extension has to be done on the IMAP client, which I haven't done yet, but would be pretty, pretty simple to do if anyone's interested. So uh, let's look at a stampy system. As, the, as this slide opened, the system actually started and you can see in the, uh, transcript here, it's talking, it's uh, logging what, what folders were already processed. So that should, that normally finishes pretty quickly on my normal development laptop. It's under five seconds to scan my entire ar archive, which is at this point about half a gigabyte and has about 200,000 messages in it. In this little demo archive, we have uh, 384 megabytes, okay, 53 folders and little less than 100,000 messages. And uh, it should be done by now, I'd hope. Yeah, scanning is complete. So uh, in a Stampy system, you have a record of, of the accounts. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, in more detail, how to configure that in this example. I have three, one, let's say for your company account, your private ISP account and the local account is for the local Unix mail. That's how I normally have it set up. Um, if uh, we go back, the, the system also obviously holds on to the folder structure of the mail archive. So in here we have uh, uh, three, five directory entries and each directory has a bunch of folders in it with some number of messages in them. Um, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, the other thing is 
Janitor is actually a process that uh, initially goes and scans the folders. So in order so that I don't block the entire UI while the folders are being scanned, they are actually scanned in the background with low priority. So you can use the image, you can actually open the reader while the scan is in progress, assuming the folders that are first displayed are already scanned. Otherwise, it also freezes for a bit before the folder actually finishes scanning. But uh, um, generally, it works fine. Uh, mail directories is just where the mail archive sits. There's various options that I'll talk about a bit later. And also, the system maintains the rule sets that are associated with individual folders. So I would have a one rule set for one inbox, different rule set for another inbox. Uh, I have a rule set. This one is actually. This is actually when I played with the garbage collection. I have a rule here which is kind of interesting, maybe. Uh, so the RSS is a directory with a bunch of folders for different RSS feeds. And so I wrote a rule for the entire RSS folder, which would look at uh, how many messages were read and uh, how many were not deleted, and if they were. What was that? This is a rule that would basically try to trim down the, 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 the folder for a particular feed and keep it for, you know, last 100 messages unless they are older than 30 days. So, you know, that sort of just, just was just playing with something. And this is something that could easily run in the background when the, when the janitor process that I showed earlier basically finishes scanning, it just finishes and dies. But I could use it to do this sort of automated, you know, nightly or whatever cleanup and comp compaction. So that's basically what's in the system class. Uh, what's interesting about this is that um, it's completely backend kind of stuff. There's no UI involved here. It runs on its own. It will be pol it will pulp the accounts, sort the mail as it comes in, do whatever you need to do. So it can be used for not just uh, mail client UI, but uh, you can write several UIs for it. Did I just close the presentation? I think I did. That was smart. OK. I uh, should be able to get there pretty quickly. Yeah, Stampy system, right. Fortunately, it's uh, hooked up right now. I had, it hook I had the presentation set up so that it created a new system uh, right away, but I later on I just switched it to use a default system account, so it's still running in the background there. Normally, when you when you have Stampy loaded, you get a why is it scanning again? Oh, okay, so it shuts down the default account when you close the presentation. Never mind, <laughs> it's already back up again. So, but normally when you load Stampy, you get this menu up here. You can activate the system or deactivate it. You can inspect it. There are a few settings there. Uh, where the mail folder is, what sort of UIs you want to use. I have a very primitive contacts framework to be able to send messages to people, which is sometimes useful. Um, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and then you can open a reader, a writer, or the address book. So. Um, if we continue, uh, the configuration of, of, as you've shown, the settings are pretty simple, and they are simple because they cannot really configure much beyond the basic sort of usability settings. To actually set up Stampy uh, for use, you need to define accounts, you need to uh, do various few things you want to do. So here's how, you, how I, I basically, the way I set up Stampy is I have a file in which loads Stampy and creates all these all these structures for me directly from the file. And so far, it seems to be the simplest way to deal with it anyway. I'm not sure uh, an actual UI would buy me too much. So to set up an account, you define a user, and this is the regular net client user. Uh, then you need to specify incoming and outgoing server in form of a host spec. So in this example, we have a spool spec, which means the, s the mail is going to come from the var spool mail directory on my, on my system locally here. It's going to pull for mail every 10 minutes. Uh, I mean, it reads reasonably straightforwardly, I think. Similarly, outgoing 
server is going to be SMTP. It's going to use the same user, and I want to want it to go use pop pop 3s. And then finally, once I have incoming and outgoing, I can create an account associated with a particular folder in the archive. I can give it a name, and I tell it what the incoming and outgo outgoing servers are, and the user is captured by the by the host specs, so I don't need to specify the user separately because technically you can have different user for incoming and outgoing, different different credentials. So that's what you do for each account. Then you specify whatever rules you want. Generally, you want rules associated with the inboxes. So here I have a. Uh, a, r a rule is basically a pair of blocks. The first one is the is the conditional, which decides if something's going to happen with this particular message or not. If it returns true, and then it's going to run the second block with again with the message as the argument. So in the first rule, we have if the subject of the message matches log watch, then move that message to folder log watch. Uh, that's something that you get from the uh, Unix uh, Linux. Uh, system automatically does some sort of stuff every day and gives you a report of how, how how's your system doing. Similarly, in the second example, this is for sorting the RSS stuff. Uh, for reading RSS, I use this utility called RSS to email, which I believe is a sim simple Python script, which basically pulls the feed URLs. Question? Or? Oh, time? Okay, how much? I'm good? I'm over. Okay, well, all right. Well, there's not much more left here. I wanted to show the client a little bit, but many of you probably saw it on Monday during the awards uh, presentation. Uh, what I would like to mention is I actually have also a simple Seaside front end since it's packaged as a back end of its own. Uh, which uh, could be interesting as well that I'm not sure I showed, but here you are looking at the same system and shows all the unread messages in the system. This is what I wrote so that I can actually check a running system from somewhere else easily. And that's, I guess, the main advantage of a mail client in Smalltalk. You can do whatever you want with it. I wrote little extensions to maintain my, you know, clean up my folders, throw out, a bunch of attachments that I didn't care about. That's the sort of stuff that's hard to do with the prepackaged, externally provided mail clients. So there is some benefit to it. Thank you very much. Paul, Alan is uh, getting set up, though. We can give an opportunity for a few questions or uh, anything else that we prevented you from covering.